Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be talking about former President Trump's chances in winning in a pretty big electoral college landslide based out of current polling data that we have just received about certain voters. Now before we get started with the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit the post bell notification and make sure to follow the Twitter and join the Discord in the description down below. And let's get right into this. And so pretty much, guys, Donald Trump has started his trial in New York City. This basically forbids him from campaigning throughout the day, mostly. He's going to have to do it throughout the night, pretty much. And you could make a case that there are certain voters that feel like this is a political prosecution and is going to help him overall. And really, if you look at polling data throughout the past year and a half, whenever his legal troubles come up in the news cycle, he tends to do better in the general polling aggregate, which I find pretty interesting. And a new piece of data that came out shows voters support for him based on how many times they voted in an election. So you can see, for example, you look at the all category, you can see voters back Trump 44 to 26 based out of no voters that have not voted at all. If you look at people who have voted once, presumably probably maybe 2022, you will look at 45 to 33. So even that electorate skews favorably towards him. People who have voted since 2020 only backed Biden by two points. So the 2020 electorate has been shaved down for from a 4.5 victory to about a three point, uh, a two point victory. And if you look at people from 2018, they backed Biden by about 11 points. The voters who have voted in all three elections back him by 11. And if you look at this, these are the white voters that are skewing massively to the left. Even some of the white voters that skew to the left uh, from 2020, these are the voters that skew to the left. It's mainly the white voters from recent cycles who are very leaning Republican. And even black support for Trump, you know, he's at 32% with completely brand new voters. And he's losing Hispanics by one point with brand new voters. And basically, this is to make the case that it seems like the newer the voter, the more likely they are to vote for Trump. And it's only a matter of, OK, can we actually turn out these voters? That is the big question. And I believe that there is going to be based out of, you know, the RNC, you know, Laura Trump has done an effective job so far with kind of instating new policies and stating new methods and really supporting Trump with his fundraising as well as other Senate candidates. So I think that the Republicans are going to be in a pretty good spot to turn out some of these voters. Now, what I did is I basically broke down these by group here. And you can see that based out of completely new voters, Donald Trump is winning the Electoral College in a landslide. And I have this election model here that actually is able to show us what we could basically see in a 2024 election scenario based out of these demographics. So for the first scenario, which is Trump with completely brand new voters, he's leading Biden by 18 points with these voters. And you can see that with the whites, he's up by 42 points. With blacks, Biden is up by 10 points and Hispanics, he's only up by one. And you can see that that pushes Donald Trump to 463 electoral college votes. And he's ahead in the popular vote by almost 30 points in this scenario. He's able to win states like Illinois, even Maryland, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Flip, Delaware, Virginia, Florida, and Texas are completely stronghold states as well as even Georgia and even North Carolina are pretty solid states. If we actually go here, you'll be able to see that New York is a likely margin for Trump. Same thing for Oregon, Connecticut. Delaware is actually a safe state for Trump on this map. Colorado is a 15-point win for the former president. He wins Illinois by 17 points. So this is a massive victory for the former president on this map based out of new voters. People who have voted once since 2018, Trump leads by about approximately 12 points here i think it's actually 17 points no it's 12 points my bad guys and so he leads whites by about 25 biden leads blacks by about 30 i guess you could say about 35 and with hispanics Biden is ahead by one or excuse me he's tied with hispanics in this scenario and so if you were to do that Trump is still winning 393 electoral votes to 145. He still flips Colorado. He still flips Delaware, New Jersey, New Hampshire. He gets a bunch of, you know, a bunch of swing states. Yeah, see, he's able to flip Delaware. He flips Colorado by two. He flips Illinois by over a point. Maine by a couple, by like almost 
a little bit over two points. These are still big wins. Michigan is a likely margin, about a 13-point victory. So they're still big wins. And if you look here with voters who have voted twice since 2018, Biden only leads Trump by two. If you look with Hispanics, he's tied with Hispanics still. With blacks, Biden is up by 55 points. But with whites, Trump is only up by four. So that's really what's going to swing the electorate back to Biden. And what's actually funny about this is that Trump still wins the Electoral College, but he doesn't win it through the Rust Belt. He actually wins it through Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Georgia. He actually still picks up New Mexico in this scenario. If we actually go look for it, we can see that New Mexico is a tilt margin for Trump. So he's still able to win the Electoral College. Even in this scenario, the only scenario where he loses the Electoral College is only with voters who have voted three times. You can see Biden is backed by them by 11 points. He's tied with white. So that already puts Biden on the top. He flips Iowa, North Carolina, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada back, but still not even Georgia. And then if you were to look and see Biden's up 81 points with blacks. So that basically flips you know, Georgia and Ohio back into the column as well. And you can see with Hispanics, Biden is up by 19. But even in this scenario, he's still not even winning the by as much as that he did in 2020. The only reason why he's winning Florida is because he's basically tied with whites. If Trump was winning whites by four, you would see he'd be winning Iowa, Ohio and Florida still. So even in that scenario, that wouldn't even be the case. And so Biden has a big electoral college victory with those kind of voters. But however, if you average out all of the voting groups, you could see Trump leads by 45. Uh, he leads 42.5 to 38%. And it's about a almost a five point lead in the popular vote. And what's funny is that Biden's approval rating is right around 40%. And Trump's approval rating is actually around 42% right now. So the the demographics are not even necessarily that off when it comes to the approval ratings. And if you look at these demographics, Trump is up 18 with whites. So that already puts him on the top here, leading the popular vote by a point. The lead with blacks for Biden gets shaved down to basically a half point. And if you look at Hispanics, Biden is only winning them by five, which gives Trump the state of New Mexico here. And you can see Trump beats Biden 331 electoral college votes to 207 and if we start looking at the margins we're going to fill out an electoral college map based out of these margins and so the safe republican states would be all of the great plains states you know pretty much all of the great appalachian states as well these would be completely safe for the former president if we come down all the way over here you could see even states like florida for example are going to be voting for the former president by quite a lot florida Ohio are going to be safe Republican margins. If we look at Iowa, Iowa is actually exactly a 15 point victory as well. Even the state of Georgia is actually a safe state as well. It's a 56 to 42 percent margin. I don't know if it's safe. Actually, if you really think about it, that's actually not safe, but it's right around the corner of being safe. South Carolina is a safe state. Utah, even Nebraska's first is safe. Nebraska's second, if we were to actually try to look for it here. Okay, it's still not there yet. North Carolina is a pretty big victory for the former president right here. He ends up winning it by about 13 points. Alaska is a big win for the former president. Even Texas is a 21-point win for Donald Trump in this scenario. If we look at Maine second, Trump is winning that by almost 25 points. In this scenario, not 25, excuse me, he's winning it by 16. Arizona is a 10-point victory for the former president. Nevada is about a, like an 8-point victory for him. Pennsylvania is like a 6-point win, or it's a little bit higher than that. It's probably like a 7 or 8-point win at looking at the math. Wisconsin is actually, it's funny because in this scenario, Pennsylvania is actually a bigger victory for Trump than Michigan or Wisconsin which is interesting. Michigan is actually a 52.2 to 46.2 victory. So that's exactly, I believe that's almost exactly a six point win. Wisconsin is around a slightly bigger margin. And Pennsylvania is actually the biggest margin out of the, all of the Rust Belt states, despite Biden polling the best there, which is pretty interesting. And then right around here is the popular vote. So Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Nevada still vote to the right of the nation in this scenario. 
New Mexico. Trump's actually winning New Mexico by five points in this scenario. He actually wins New Mexico pretty comfortably in this scenario. Virginia, he ends up picking off Virginia by about a point in the Electoral College. If you look at Nebraska second, he's winning Nebraska second by about four points. If you look at Minnesota, this is the state where Trump actually finally starts to lose. Minnesota is a tilt margin for Biden. If we look at New Hampshire, you can see that Trump is basically losing there by about a point. And the only reason why is because whites don't shift as heavily in this scenario. You can see New Jersey is a three-point victory for Biden. You can see that Maine is a four-point win. And presumably Maine's first, I'd assume, is probably a likely victory for Biden. And if we see over here, if we look at New Hampshire, let's keep going, guys. Illinois is a five-point victory for Biden. If we look at Colorado, it's actually a lean margin of victory for Biden in this scenario. Delaware is a literally like a seven-point win for Biden. And Connecticut is a likely victory as well. You can see Oregon is a likely victory for the for, for the incumbent president in New York is a 12 point victory for Biden in this scenario in Rhode Island it's also around a 13 point win as well and if you look at Maine's first then Washington is still likely and then presumably the rest of the states are going to be safe democrat with basically California being pretty much the closest safe state it's right around a 15 point win and that's where these demographics put Trump on the electoral map. So basically, if you were to average out all of these results and put them in one matchup, Trump is leading the aggregate by 4.5 points. And right now, Trump is down in the aggregate by half a point. So if the polls overestimate him or underestimate him by the same amount they have before, that's right around where this electoral college result, or at least the popular vote result, would actually end up being and if you actually look at the model trump is leading 40 52 to 46 percent which is about a six point win and this is a 4.5 margin of victory so it's right around the margin of error when it comes to what i was basically modeling from these results right here and if we look more specifically at the actual u.s popular vote it's actually right around it's right around that victory margin it's right around there it's it, here it looks like it's a six point three percentage point victory in the popular vote but if you were to really make this like a four point win the only difference here is really none because trump has won these swing states by so much that even if you were to shave this down to like a four point victory so if like whites were to shift by like a little bit trump's leading here by a probably about five the electoral college result doesn't even change so trump would still be winning 331 electoral college votes and would even be winning new mexico by a pretty comfortable margin in texas florida ohio iowa would, would be long gone results the rust belt would completely be long gone for biden north carolina and georgia would be foregone conclusions even arizona and nevada as well new mexico and minnesota would even be in play for the former president as well and so that is basically it for this electoral analysis showing this new data that we've got and we could see that trump might be headed for a pretty big electoral college victory compared to historical data and so if you guys did enjoy this video please hit that like button subscribe to the channel make sure to hit that post bell notification so you don't miss another video that i post and make sure to follow the twitter and join the discord in the description down below and i hope to see you guys very very soon